So okay. hello, uh, I'm Gregory. This is Tebi Modisagabe. Is that right? Yeah, Modisagabe. <laughs> oh, good. Thank yeah. you. I, I should have remembered that from 30 years ago whenever I met you. And um, we're in uh, the year 2021. Okay. The world is changing. I think it's going to be a more global future. Um, Africa's changing, Europe is changing, Australia's changing. And I'm, uh, I have a proposal to work with architects like Tebby to um, try to support and develop architects' professional and personal lives. Uh, so we met once um, in Gaborone, where there were f three from Gaborone and one from London to talk about, um, actually there was one from Edinburgh as well, um, that was uh, Aisha Junkie, a student, and we talked about um, Tebby's uh, role in architecture as a role model for, for African women architects. Sorry about my builders. And uh, the, the idea would be to build up a network, a support network, uh, to to encourage uh, mentoring and um, leadership in architecture, as uh, Tebby is demonstrating, and to to connect uh, younger professionals with more experienced professionals, possibly even to inspire the more experienced professionals with the enthusiasm of the younger professionals. Sometimes the, the more mature professionals are not uh, as energetic as the ones who are f new in the business. So there's a, there's a potential win-win for both sides, I think. Um, and Tebby brought along uh, La Fence and uh, Baoni from Botswana. This is, feels like a construction site. I'm sorry about the noise. Um, and also uh, Aisha Janki came from Edinburgh. She's a recently migrated architecture student who's working on advocacy for uh, black architects in, well, actually Muslim black architects in Britain and I suppose internationally. I think she's mainly active in the UK as a, I think, second or third year architecture student, very ambitious. And also... Um, she has some other roles as a fashion model and other things. So that seems to be the 21st century is the multidisciplinary and trying to support um, diversity, I guess, in our profession. And so I'm reaching out to Tebby to see what we can do to encourage young professionals and maybe be inspired by young professionals as well. Deb, did you want to say something, yeah. Tebby, about that? Oh, yeah, just to, for uh, correction mm -hmm. here, interior architecture, mm -hmm. not yeah. architecture. And uh, the fact that we want to uh, encourage women to join or just to, to be part of the, the built environment because they, they fear that is a lot of work and it's a male dominated industry. So we're trying to empower them and to train them, mentor them and to be ready for the industry. So as an interior architect who has been practicing uh, for over a decade, um, I'm willing to share my knowledge, my experiences, my challenges, my success with the young female um, designers and architects. Um, so that's what we want to do because they, you know, one of the things that we would like to do is to do um, job shadowing because uh, it's very important for them to actually appreciate just a day to see how our day goes um, as, as an industrial um, industry player because um, designing on paper and being practical is completely two different things. Uh, so there are challenges. You know, uh, I always look at young people creating nice designs but when it comes to implementation it's a problem and just um 
coordinating the project and everything else, project management, it's, it's a big um, of a, a challenge for these young people. So we want as the industry people with vast of experience like yourselves, because you, you taught and you, you still teach um, to mentor them and to say, you can, if I can, if young people can, you can do it. And the more we talk to them, the more they think it's easy to actually do it. So we want to also um, do um, exchange programs where um, young people from Rwanda or wherever get to travel to other countries to experience. We might not have you know, rich heritage buildings, but other, other countries might, and it would be nice to see. We might not have um, uh, um, very nice modern um, buildings or state, uh, skyscrapers, but when we travel the world, you get to appreciate um, the history of architecture and design. So that's where we are, and to do master classes for these students, because you know I I work with uh, young people every day. I know how it is they get excited, but now if we now start thinking practical things, it, it, it's like mind block. You know they look at the 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 beauty of the design. So we are saying um, let's let's take this to the next level. Let's empower our, our young people, female mostly, um, especially the female. Um, architects and designers to, to, to collaborate with their young friends, uh, female, uh, male friends, and, and make it happen. They can do it. I think they can. If I can do it, then I can be uh, on the construction sites and dating myself and be able to talk to men who they fear. <laughs> they can do it. Just have to set your mind into it. So yeah, um, that's what we we're trying to achieve. And it's a conversation that we, we also had with um, Alex um, a few years ago to collaborate with Botswana um, um, professionals. So that's the conversation that we're at um, for now. Yeah, I think we've covered something that I think is useful. That's really uh, great to, to hear, uh, Tebby. And uh, last night we were both on a forum uh, with uh, Julia from the IBD Hub, and she was talking to someone from uh, Bjerke Ingels Group, uh, an architect from the US, and he was also suggesting that uh, these large corporate architecture firms are trying to encourage their staff from within using um, internal mentoring programs. So I, I think we would be in a position to support and upskill architecture and interior architecture and interior design firms and any construction firms to build in these mentoring programs within. A as you said, Tebby, um, there are all kinds of uh, things working against women architects, interior architects, because they're not the same as architects, and also black architects in non uh, outside Africa. So black architects are often minority in the UK, for example. Women, black women, Muslim black women, for example, have all sorts of um, marginalized positioning. And I think by empowering those people, and helping everybody to be the best architect or interior architect they can be, then we are encouraging everybody um, instead of working with those kind of inbuilt um, barriers and, and silos that we tend to have between all the different professionals. We want to let everyone become the best professional they can be. And I think those mentoring is to help those people, encouraging them that they can do what they want to do if they follow somebody who has that experience, as you said, Tebby. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, to encourage them to join uh, conversations like uh, Gula is doing every Wednesday evening. I mean, um, if we can have our young people joining and listening in, and like I always comment i wish you know i can make comments but it's always nice to listen and say wow i'm on the right track so imagine mm -hmm. having such conversations even with young people 
they'll be encouraged and that's what we want to do and the fact that uh you've already established relationships across the, the globe and it's important that we use those networks to empower young people these big corporates these big organizations architectural firms they're willing they're willing to um uh, absorb our our startups our our young graduates um to their firms whether virtually or physically, they are willing to do that. And it's one of the things that I think we need to take advantage of, of if, if people are willing to. And I was looking at, uh, what is the, the gentleman's name? The one that we had, a, um, we had an opportunity, Kai, Kai Iwe. Yeah. Kai, yeah. Right. So I looked at his pro, that profile. Oh, this is futuristic, you know. It's amazing, really? and um, yeah, big. The, the, the company is called Big. It's amazing. So these are the things that we want to see um, happening for our, our countries and, and the collaboration, the synergies, you know, um, networking. And even you might be surprised that some of them will be hired, you know, looking for talent. We've got hidden talent in Africa. So let's take that hidden talent to the world. Yeah. I totally agree. I'm, I'm sure that if, if we said to uh, Kai that um, there is already a conversation between Rwanda and Botswana, and we would like to have one of the mentors from, from Bjerke Ingels Group, from Big Architects, then I'm sure they would, they would allow that person to do that during their lunchtime to inspire people uh, to help this African conversation that you said is already existing between Rwanda and Botswana and also beyond into Europe and America, into Asia, Australia and so on. I think we can build on that relationship that already exists between you and Alex. Yeah, you see, uh, I, I got to appreciate uh, Malaysia and Australia and uh, traveling around the world one of the things that I appreciate is you learn from other people. You learn um, different um, designs from different, you know, countries and cultures. And um, there's always synergies. There's always something that in the future, it might not happen now, but in the future, there will be synergies and people will work together. You know, sometimes we even have, like locally, we have joint ventures. Uh, we do tenders, sometimes it's, it's JV, sometimes it's consortiums, and we go all the way to Singapore to look for partners. And these are friends that we've known them for, for so many years. And when there is an opportunity, we jump in and say, come on board. We've got people from South Africa that we always bring. So why can't we start relationships like that when they are projects we can always do, compete and we bring them on board? I, I, I don't see any, any reason why we can, we can collaborate um, because they, there's an opportunity to collaborate even with international uh, companies. Well, there's, a, there's a lot to be gained from that sort of collaboration because you have experience which others don't have and the same in reverse. So it's a two-way street. I think sometimes we tend to be too afraid of competition between, uh, say, for example, the architecture profession protects um, the title and so on. And but we we have a lot to learn from interior architects. We have a lot to learn from construction managers, and we just need to keep the conversation open. It doesn't mean by talking to someone that they're that they're going to run away and take your work away. I think we have to keep the conversation open uh, across the borders of both the disciplines and also the, the national borders. And, and especially between um, uh, women I, I and we men, which what you said earlier when we were talking, it was very nice to hear LaFensa say there's pros and cons to being a woman foreman on a construction site. You get treated differently than you would if you were a man. But on the other hand, you know, there are some benefits. So there, there's, there's a lot to be said about that, I'm sure, that, that people can share that. Yeah, um, yeah it's, 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 I, I do that. I, 
you know, I started doing that in, in Malaysia where I would I'd ask my Asian friends to help me with my, my assignments. And I was, I was happy to do that, knowing that I will learn from them. They would learn from me as well. And I've, 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 I've done it since. I've never stopped it. Even now, I do have friends that I ask for help because I, um, I cannot know everything. I'm not um, jack of all trades. So it's important to collaborate and, and you learn from people. They will definitely learn from you. Like uh, now we, we, we are heading towards uh, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence. Why can't we redesign and you are there and I'm here? And all we have to do is to make sure one is, is compiling everything and we submit. So even um, short classes we can start and this mentorship can start virtually. And eventually when um, the world is open to travels, now we can uh, see how best we can you know, travel across the world. You know, sometimes we, we sit on opportunities and not appreciate our, our countries and people from outside come back and say, wow, You've got rich culture, you've got rich this, beautiful. So this is where we want to sell our countries by exchanging our knowledge, our experiences through culture, through our environment, our landscape. And we can um, demonstrate that through architecture, through designs. And uh, I hope, uh, because we find that in, in Africa, there are similarities uh, in, in the culture. And I, for some reason, Rwanda and Botswana, we've got a lot of similarities. We can, we can um, translate that into um, design, you know, into a space and talk about it, you know, come up with crazy ideas and say, this is my theme. And, you know, I'm selling Botswana, I'm selling Rwanda. Yeah, so I'm excited. And I look forward to this uh, collaborations. Thank you so much, Tebby, for speaking today. And, um, I will uh, share this with um, Alex and Emmanuel, and I hope we can we can get this conversation going. And I've really enjoyed actually just the last couple of years getting to know Tebby again and to hear more about what's happening in Botswana and in Rwanda. And I would love to join in that conversation about what you guys are doing there. And I'd be happy to tell you about how little is going on over here as well and in Europe, and I'd be happy to share any of my experience as well. So I think uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you all. And, and you know what, Alex, is, because he's, he's a lecturer, uh, you can actually have a virtual um, guest, be the guest lecturer for his class. You can start the right day. You don't have to wait for all this paperwork because obviously when there's collaborations, people believe in, uh, MOUs, so you can start and say, today I'm gonna to talk about urban design or whatever to the architectural students that he teaches. Um, I'm not sure what year he teaches, um, but yeah, he teaches architectural students. So let's start from there. And I told him last time when I, when I come to Rwanda, I was talking about just coming in as a lecturer for interior design. I look forward to physical, um, uh, classroom with him, but I don't mind virtual. So it's something that we can do um, going forward. Brilliant idea. Thank you, Tebby. And it was really nice seeing you today. Have a lovely day. I, I would love to talk to you some other time also more about music in Botswana and Rwanda, because that's another interest of mine. But it was lovely talking to you about design and architecture. So. Thank you for today. Lovely. Thank you. All right. Cheers. See you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.